Uh, for this next game, we're, we drop down to 1A, uh, Class 1A, where you have 5-2 and two West Branch playing host to 6-2 and two Mediapolis. This is a meaty matchup, Ryan, at, at Bush Bay Peterson Field at the Little Rose Bowl. Uh, Mediapolis played last week while West Branch had the week off. Um, Mediapolis with a f- dominating 54-6 to six victory against Van Buren County. Um, of all the games on the slate this week, Ryan, just on paper, you never know what's going to happen when they, when they tee it up, but this one looks like the most intriguing and the most, maybe the, the, the one that's, uh, maybe the, the one that's hardest to figure out, I would say. Yeah, I'm doing my whatever this signal. I mean, I'm, I'm excited for this one. This is where I'm going. <laughs> um, and we talked about this two weeks ago that you kind of, that I kind of circled this one. I think this is one of the better, you know, round of 32 games that you're probably going to find anywhere. In any um, class. Yeah. I mean, this is a, and, and just historically, uh, cause you know, some teams can go, you know, win five or six games and be five and two or whatever. And you don't know how good they are. Mediapolis always plays good football. I mean, they have for years. They're, they're, they just do. They, they play good football. It's one of those teams that you know when you see them when you get to this time of year and you see one or two losses by them, you're like, okay, you know, Regina, they went and played a really good game down there last year. Um, you know that they're going to be good. And then when you look at their schedule a little bit, like they, have, they lost to West Liberty in the opener, and we know West Liberty. You've seen West Liberty. We know they're a solid team. And then Some they lost to Sig- there. Yep. And then they lost to uh, Sigourney Kyoto who's number three in 1A right now, unbeaten. So they've played good teams. They've seen good teams. Um, they're going to be a good team. But I went through this one a lot, looked at a bunch of different things. And, I mean, they're, they're different, of course. You're playing different levels of opponents, all that stuff. But the stats are pretty similar. In fact, that nothing really stands out where, like, this team does this really, really well. One, you know. One number does jump out to me. I'm just looking at the, the this, uh, quick stats. Minneapolis, yep. 7.1 yards per carry. That's what I was getting to. Their top – they don't That's have that impressive. guy. It's really impressive. And when you look at their top two backs, you probably have their names there. I don't. Their top two backs, one has about 600, one has about 400. Combined, they've rushed for 1,115 yards, 12 TDs, 9.4. So that gets your attention. Yeah. I mean, that's I'm sure some of that is schematic. You're finding the right time to get those guys the ball. I think the one but that's obviously getting those guys in space, putting them in, in position to be successful. But when you have what I'm saying is like you don't lots of times you look at a team like we just did it with O line, right? The guy's got twelve hundred yards and you, you <laughs> open up quick stats and right away you're like, this guy. They don't have that necessarily when their leading rusher has 600 or whatever, especially they've played eight games, I think. But, man, you break down some of it. They're averaging 7.5 yards per play on the year. You know, to, not, not yards per – I mean, per play. But yeah. you're averaging 7.5 yards per play, you're going to be successful. Is that good? Um, that is good. <laughs> it's not Marcus Morgan good. Because they're averaging like eight and a half or nine. And, you know, I had that somewhere in two home games, Rob. I, I, I apologize to the West Branch people. In two home games this year, I think I have this in my capsules. West is averaging like 12 and a half yards per play at home this year. It's just something insane. But yeah, that's – Anyway. That crazy. I love this matchup. I do. I, I, I fully anticipate this being the type of game that West Branch has played the last two weeks to put itself in this position. Um, they've played really good games the last couple weeks. Um Including that, you know, they were up on they were up I think thirty five seven on Beckman in the final in, in week I always want to say week nine uh, in the regular season finale and that ended up thirty five twenty one. But before that, they played a really good game twenty eight twenty one game that came down to the wire against Durant. I anticipate that obviously that type of one possession game um, keys two things that that really stood out to me and not even necessarily looking so much at Mediapolis. I think they're good. I think they're going to score points. I think they're going to move the ball. I think they're going to run it. But I, I think West Branch is, is there, you know, is up. I think these teams are really evenly matched. 
But what stands out to me about West Branch is first three games, Rob, they averaged 61 yards a game rushing, and they were one and two. And, and I'm sure some of this, a little bit, is level of competition. You know, we talked about that. They started with a, a Tipton team that's pretty good, West Liberty, Cascade. But just they weren't running the ball the way that you expect West Branch football to run the ball. 62 yards, 65 yards, 57 yards, you know, one touchdown, one touchdown, two touchdowns. Last four games, all wins, 220 rushing yards a game. So they've really flipped that, you know, level of competition maybe a little bit. And good team, Beckman, pretty good team. They've run the ball against them. The fact is they had West Branch sophomore running back, Andy Henson. First year of being that guy, you know, first, first year being the back at West Branch, being the full-time guy, he averaged 71 yards a game in those first three, 153 the last four, um, once, 170 back-to-back -back games each of the last two games. So, and I saw him against Wilton. Um, he just looked much different than he did in week three against Cascade. And yeah, you, know, you got to shout out the offensive line in that situation, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll say this now, and as long as we do this, I, I can't break down offensive line play. If there's giant holes, they did a good job, I guess. But I'm, I can't – I'm just not – my knowledge base isn't there. Um, my knowledge very, base very, – Very few running backs at this level, Ryan, are going to be successful without a good offensive line. It just right. – you're not going to – Right. It's not like Tavian Banks or Tim Dwight are running – <laughs> running back there, you know, for a lot of right. these teams. It's right. There have to be holes there. Right. And I think they've really improved with that. Um, you know, which is obviously credit to the West Branch coaching staff. And you you know that they were going to improve. I didn't know that they would make a you know 61 to 220 yard jump like that. You know, I mean that's a you know you're tripling your rushing production. Um but I think that's the big thing for West Branch too, because the other stat I marked down, I know I brought this up one other time on a pod, and that's Gavin Hirschman, senior quarterback. I, I just really like the way that he plays. We talked about it with volleyball the other day, senior setters, senior quarterbacks this time of year. You, you, you just love those guys with experience, and especially a guy like him, knows the game so well. I think it's slowed down for him, but I, I know I mentioned this. The biggest stat from that Beckman game for me was, he carried it 17 times, 79 yards. That's huge because he was really limited in that for a long time. When he can run the ball, I shouldn't say when he can, when he's able to run the ball, when he's you know feeling good enough to run the ball, it adds another dimension to that offense. Um, and I don't think he's really had a chance to do that this year. Um, I think the game's really slowed down for him this year. I think he's seeing the game and, and doing all those things that you want a quarterback to do at a different, at a much higher level than he was at the end of last year or the start of this year. But I think sometimes he was seeing stuff and just knew that he wasn't, you know, that he didn't want to get out and run at that point. Um, he's a little banged up. If he's able to do that, you get the week off. I think that adds another element to their offense a little bit like we talked about with Liberty that you probably haven't seen that much. I'm sure they're aware that he can run. I mean, you can look at some stuff from last year too, but that's something that I think when you're looking at two even teams, Rob, that's something that I can see tipping it towards West Branch a little bit is he was a big difference maker for them last year with his ability to get out and run. And it just adds something else that you have to prepare for another weapon, another thing that you can do. I think that's going to be key for them on Friday is, his ability to kind of compliment Henson in the run game. And at least on paper, Ryan, it looks like, uh, you know, West Branch is a little more balanced, 1,312 yards through the air, 1065 on the ground, um, three interceptions thrown by West Branch. Mediapolis has thrown seven picks. I don't think – if Mediapolis – it's kind of like that we were talking about earlier where you try to make a team uncomfortable. I don't think right. Mediapolis wants to throw the ball. Uh, they're 54 for 113 through the air this this year with seven picks. So, if West Branch can at least slow down that that you know potent running game for Mediapolis, that certainly bodes well. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about making them uncomfortable. And then in West Branch, I think getting this game at home. I I know, you know, in this in high school, um, 
I don't think it's so much, I, I want to make sure I say this correctly. I don't think it's so much like the home field advantage, the way you think of it in college or professional sports, but I'm big into this, you know, you, you're keeping things as, as normal as you can, right? And I think for a lot of times, high school kids, it's routine. It's what, and not, not even routine of the day, but just what they're used to. You know, it's not, things don't look different. You know, where's the score clock or the, or the, the play clock, I mean, at this field or things like that. Um, and they've always been really good. We talked about it with Bates Field with City High. West Branch, you've been there. They take so much pride in that community, so much pride in that field. It's a really cool place to watch a game. Um, but they've they played Tipton at home, and then they haven't been in the, in the opener. And I don't think they've been at home since. A really weird season. They were at West Liberty. They played Cascade at Solon because it rained all That's week right. and they couldn't get the field painted. They're at Wilton. They're at Maquoketa the Valley in a rescheduled game that was supposed to be Northeast at home. You know, and they and they went up there so that Maquoketa could celebrate homecoming, which was important for them mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, and then they're at Durant and they're at Beckman. So, I mean, they haven't played a home game in two months or whatever it is. I mean, August yeah. 28th. And so I, I really do think I'm not, you know, we should, we should ask Vegas what the Little Rose Bowl is. Is that a three-point stadium? Is that a three-and-a-half-point stadium? What, what kind of a bump do, do we get on the line with, with the Little Rose Bowl? But I, I, I think, think it's think more than you would – if the standard is three points, the Little Rose Bowl is probably worth seven. <laughs> but don't – I mean, I really do think for them there is something. Oh, without question. That – And then the pride factor. I mean, look. They, they don't lose very often there. I mean, they don't lose very often as it is. We've talked about this with Regina. I mean, these are two programs that don't lose a lot. But I think they're comfortable there. And, and, and then, I mean, in Minneapolis has to travel a little bit too, which, you know, maybe that's a good thing in this weird year too. I, I don't know. But um, I like West Branch being at home. You, what I'm saying is I think this game is really even just from everything I've looked at. And there's a couple things that I think can tip it towards West Branch a little bit. Maybe I'm looking for those things. I don't know. But I think there's a couple of things that maybe tip it their way just a little bit. But, again, I said this in the opening about this game. This is as excited as a game as I've been for a game in a while. It really is. I mean, I think it's a really good game. I circled it two weeks ago. Uh, I think it'll be a really good atmosphere. I'm excited for this one. Really excited for this game. Staying with the theme with that, Ryan, before we move on to our last game, first meeting between these two. Mediapolis and West Branch. So that's that's uh, kind of surprising. That, I think one, been, that one surprises me more than the others. Outside of classes, a little bit. I know yeah. Mediapolis was two A, I believe, for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, they were right when I moved back. They had a kid that went and played at can't I say moved back? Right when I started covering sports in this area, they had a kid that went and played at Kansas State, I believe. Yep. Quarterback. Yep. Um, but they had some. Like I said, they played good football. They played good football for a long time. There's, there's no question about that. 